um, this webinar, Creating a Concept of Operations for Cooperative Driving Automation for Freeways. So first, we're just going to go over a few housekeeping items before we kick off. Um, so please dial into the conference via your phone and ask questions and participate through the chat pod. Um, we are going to have opportunities for questions periodically throughout the webinar, and we will be moderating the chat pod, and um, we'll read off any questions that we get there. We also have a few questions for participants. Um, and then at the bottom you can see sort of the dial-in options and also a command for unmuting yourself if you prefer to ask a question um, via the phone instead of the chat pod during the question period. Um, and just want to go over a quick agenda. So we are first going to um, give an introduction of the whole KARMA program before we dive into specifically the freeway applications. Um, and then we are going to walk through the current draft um, con ops for this, the specific freeway applications, cooperative driving automation um, con ops that we are developing. Um, and we'll have, like I said, opportunities for questions throughout the um, webinar, and we'll have a final opportunity at the end. Um, and I just wanted to go around and let all of our presenters um, introduce themselves quickly. Uh, Taylor Lockerin, uh, the Karma Technical Program Manager with Federal Highway Administration. Uh, this is Ed Leslie, the Project Manager on the Lido side. This is Emil KIC, the co-PI of the uh, Karma ISP. Okay, yeah, this is John Stark. I'm the other co-PI on IHP2. All right, and with that, I'm going to hand it off to Taylor Lockerin to give us the Karma overview. Alrighty, well welcome everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. We're very excited to have this presentation, this webinar focused on this very important part of what we're doing in the KARMA program, which is looking at the next iteration of what we call the integrated highway prototype. Um, so to start off, what I kind of want to do is start a little bit from the beginning if we have a, a bunch of folks on the, on the line that are uh, new to KARMA. And, and so starting off with, well, what is this KARMA thing that we're doing? Well, within the Department of Transportation, this is our open source platform well, we're trying to focus on uh, research and development in what's called cooperative driving automation. Uh, we refer to this term as CDA. Uh, and CDA is being developed right now uh, by SAE uh, in the standards uh, organization. It's going to be a new standard that's actually currently in ballot. It's called the J3216. Uh, it's a taxonomy to help us define what does it mean to be cooperative and how do we look at our systems in the future uh, for when we start to enable our, our systems with machine-to-machine -machine sharing of information, how can we start to categorize cooperative capabilities? And so we're working on that with the industry to help define these characteristics and these categories. Uh, and therefore, our program is really focused on how do we use these cooperative behaviors moving forward. So we have a lot of history uh, with the program. We've been doing uh, cooperative automation research for quite some time, uh, looking at you know, fuel efficiency, benefits with truck platooning, and with how can we increase the capacity of our highways with vehicle platooning, passenger vehicle platooning, and of course, how do we look at our intersections and reducing fuel consumption and delay uh, if our vehicles could operate uh, in partnership with our, with our traffic controllers. And our, our research is really focused on how do, we, how do these systems work together? So if we look at the transportation system of the future and we have this emergence of all this automated driving technology, how do we start to see uh, it integrating, this technology integrating into the entire transportation system. So it all started back in Karma 1, uh, where we were looking at how do we advance a concept called cooperative, um, cooperative adaptive cruise control, otherwise known as CACC. And we conducted a lot of this research, preliminary research, proof of concept research, to show that if vehicles could communicate specific information, they could use that information to follow safely and closer, therefore increasing the capacity of our freeways. Uh, and it was a very successful project that we then in return worked with an organization called CAMP to develop a prototype with a consortium of automo automo uh, OEM um, and manufacturers. And it, it turned out to be a very valuable research effort in showing how this communication technology can really enhance the mobility which we see in, a, in, a, in improving congestion. And what that then led us to is looking at, you know, Karma 2, which 
we made another iteration in Karma 2 from Karma 1. We kind of wanted to move into the open source to enable more participation from industry and academia and our partners at the state and local level to engage in this conversation around you know, sharing of information between systems and enabling more advanced safety and mobility um, operations. And we did a lot of research focusing on speed harmonization, vehicle platooning, cooperative lane change, cooperative ramp merging, as well as signalized intersection approach and departure. We conducted a lot of experimentation, and we were very successful in, uh, in learning about how this technology can, can really benefit the system as a whole. And that kind of led us into where we are today with Karma 3. In Karma 3, we're taking a holistic view of the transportation system and not only focusing on just a freeway application or a arterial application, but how do we look at the entire system as a whole. Um, we have a lot of different areas that we're focusing on, both in freights and ports. Um, we have an area focused on simulation, of course, with support services and, uh, available to you to help you get started. So focusing on some of the technology that we've advanced from our previous fleet, um, looking into the, uh, oh, into the uh, industry, we really wanted to see, you know, we really wanted to focus on using what industry is, is using to develop some of the AV technology as a way to understand how we can apply these cooperative driving automation on top of the AV technology. And that's where we developed our fleet of passenger cars um, that are now level three plus with an open source platform called Karma Platform. And our first responder vehicle that enables us to look at non, um, or it looks at, takes us a look at human controlled vehicles, which now is uh, what we call Karma Messenger. So still enabling human drivers to participate in cooperative driving automation. And coming soon, we have our fleet of automated trucks uh, which are completing uh, this month, as well as our newest member to the family, Karma 110, which is how do we scale down uh, the vehicle type, uh, but still maintain the research integrity and the research performance that we're looking at acquiring cooperative driving automation. The way we look at managing the system is we're trying to take a holistic view at the entire transportation system to see how we can provide specific rules in operating um, the system through work zones or traffic incident management or other types of areas in which we, we see a benefit in how we can provide information to these systems to enable them to drive safely and more efficiently through the scenario. We're developing a, something called Karma Cloud that's going to enable us to provide these conceptual ways of producing what's called rules for the road that help us figure out how do we manage traffic and how, what's the role of infrastructure in, in helping us improve congestion with this technology that's emerging from industry. And so, where we're going across the department is we're growing across different features, but we're also growing across the country. Uh, we have a lot of participation uh, within the U.S. Department of Transportation from all of our modes uh, with our partners at Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, uh, Maritime Administration, as well as our partners with the Federal Transit Administration looking at buses this year. Um, we're all looking at how do we best, better manage, this oper the, manage the transportation system as a whole. We have a lot of different areas in which we're going to be talking about later on, focusing on how you can get engaged through Karma Collaborative. And of course, our newest uh, feature that we have available to you all is what's called Karma Support Services, where we are, have engineers online and ready to help and assist you as you start to uh, dive into some of the Karma technology. So we have a lot of different resources for you, and I just want to put this on the screen uh, for your reference. A lot of you may know we have a new website we just launched this week with some updated content. Our GitHub site is always updated every single day. All of our documentation for everything we design goes on Confluence, you have access to that as well. Um, as well as the contact information, if you're interested in, in participating in Karma Collaborative or Karma Support Services, please feel free to email the email address and we will add you to our listserv so you can stay engaged with all of our current activities. So before we get started, I just want to see if there's any questions um, on the phone with Karma overall, and then we're going to dive right into the theme of today, which is looking at our very exciting high integrated highway prototype 2 project. All righty. Well, thank you so much for your time, and get ready. Here comes the fun, exciting stuff. Okay, thank you, Taylor, for presenting the Karma program. Uh, this is Amir Gyasi. Um, uh, before jumping into the Karma section, I want to uh, present an overview of the, uh, the CDA freeway application project. And this project is actually built, uh, is being built upon a prior 
FHWA project that advanced uh, CDA freeway features using level one ADS. Uh, now this, uh, the current project of the, you know, the CDA freeway application is uh, using uh, level three plus technology to integrate uh, CDA freeway features into a single solution uh, aiming, that actually aims to uh, basically improve the traffic efficiency. So, uh, so uh, we are uh, actually uh, bundling the three main categories of, you know, uh, the features. Um, so these, uh, these features are, uh, as you can see, are uh, cooperative lane follow, cooperative lane change, co and cooperative traffic management. So these features uh, are actually leveraging uh, the level three plus uh, ADS technology uh, to uh, actually integrate, uh, integrate into a one system, which is called Integrated Highway Prototype 2. So the main difference between these two uh, uh, projects is the, uh, is the level of the technology that we are using and also uh, leveraging the new features. Uh, so, so for today, so far, uh, Taylor has introduced uh, the cooperative automation program. Um, next, we are going to have uh, Josh Shima from University of Cincinnati uh, to, uh, to present an, a, a review of IHP1 features uh, in which he helped us uh, to, um, um, to develop the algorithm. And next, we are going to uh, present a draft conops for the CD, CDA, uh, CDA IHP2, uh, which uh, Josh Shima is actually also helped us to update the the kind of document um, according to the uh, to the new features of this you know the, in this uh, project, and also uh, the new features of uh, uh, the uh, level three ADS. And finally, we will uh, solicit any feedback, any comments. Uh, um, and we truly believe that these comments will help us uh, to advance the IHP2 project in space, uh, in in its best shape. So uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to invite Jachima um, to talk us through the, uh, the kind Yeah, thank you, Amir. Um, ho hope my voice is loud and clear. Um, so my name is Jachima with the University of Cincinnati. So I'm the, uh, one of the primary authors of the uh, kind uh, for IHP2. Uh, I'm going to introduce to you, uh, first of all, give you an overview of what is this, this CONOPS is all about, and then uh, I'm going to delve into details of the key uh, technical contents of uh, the, the components of IHP2. Uh, let me first give you uh, an introduction of the outline of this concept of operations. Um, this chapter one, as usual, uh, is a scope and summary. We'll talk about uh, uh, what is uh, IHP is all about. Uh, it's one, uh, it's cooperative driving automation, free applications, and this is one particular project we are doing here as in this project team. Uh, chapter two, we will review the existing conditions and opportunities, uh, talk about opportunities for changes. What we, were, what we did in chapter two is to overview the, the project we did a couple of years ago. Uh, we call it IHP1. That's really uh, level one automation, assuming level one automation and manage, manage lane scenarios to, for uh, the early deployment uh, benefits. Um, and then we will talk about what are the opportunities for changes, further enhancements to IHP1 uh, to, to make it a, a better serve the transport systems management and operations. Chapter three is really the, the meat of the whole CONOPS. We'll talk about operational concept of the, the next generation of the uh, CDA freeway applications. Uh, in this project, we call it IHP2, Integrated Highway Prototype 2. Uh, we will talk about different uh, uh, definitions of uh, uh, different modules of the system, and we will go through uh, uh, the, the, the technical details as well. Chapter four is really uh, talk about operational concepts and, and uh, sorry, operational scenarios of IHP2. We'll give you three different operational scenarios basically describes how different modules in IHP2 will be able to uh, um, be implemented in the, in the uh, general freeway applications and improve the system performance. Uh, chapter five, we will 
uh, we discussed uh, the analysis of the proposed system, including the potential benefits, uh, the uh, impacts on the trans business management and operations, uh, and also the uh, possible impact on the future research. We also, in this part, we talked about uh, the uh, ways, the methods uh, to evaluate uh, the, the IHP2, uh, uh, IHP2 software and applications. Uh, we, it's going to be a high-level testing plan, usually included as part of the concept of operations document. Um, so as you uh, know, the ISP-1 project we did a couple of years ago, uh, 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 we have three different applications, platooning, uh, lane change and merge, and speed harmonization. So these are usually uh, previously developed as, as separate applications, as, as Taylor mentioned, but we realized since they are going to help contribute to the management of freeway systems, so we kind of bundled them together. But in that case, we assumed uh, the, uh, uh, these applications only use level one automation to, uh, to achieve early, uh, ma uh, early benefits. And uh, these uh, vehicles, because the low mark penetration is going to operate on a CAV or, or cooperative driving automation dedicated lanes. So this is the general concept of IHP, and the, the figure here just gives you an overview when there's a vehicle platooning and the, the other vehicle may join from the merge, and then the, there can a lot of the cooperative uh, uh, operations can happen in this case. Next slide here uh, basically will introduce to you the details of uh, the three different applications we developed as a part of uh, IHP-1. Um, that's an early application. And we'll talk about how we improve upon these applications and uh, come to the IHP-2 uh, in, in this project. In IHP-1, we have three applications. The first one is platooning. Uh, as, as you can see from this uh, graph here, the, the platooning concept, uh, we have a platoon leader, and then you have uh, followers. In this case, it's, we, we prescribe the maximum uh, platoon size is eight. So there are, uh, there are eight vehicles in a single platoon. Uh, in our HP1 applications, we have some level of cooperation. For example, a platoon leader will be able to prescribe what is the, the maximum, uh, maximum size of a vehicle. And, um, and, and, it, and then they will also decide what is the gap uh, between the, the, the vehicles. But uh, we absolutely can have more, more levels of cooperation can be included in, in this uh, platooning concept. That is what we're going to do in the IHP2. Uh, for cooperative merge in the IHP1, as you can see here, uh, for regular merge, as you know, when once a vehicle, a merge vehicle, arrives at, a, at the acceleration lane, they will just find a sufficiently large, safe gap and merge into the, uh, the mainline traffic. Now, if the vehicle is lucky, they can merge into the, the mainline smoothly. But if there's congestion, if they cannot find a qualified gap, they may have to wait for a long time, or they may have to cut in, force into the mainline, causing a lot of problems for the traffic. But with cooperative merge, what we did is, in that particular IHP-1 development, we developed this kind of a, a sort of a virtual platooning concept where you can have merge vehicle following the, uh, the, the last vehicle of the first platoon, and then we can have uh, the, the first vehicle or the second platoon following the merge vehicle. So by, by doing such a thing, you can think of a gap has been created between two platoons and then and maintained until the, uh, the merge vehicle arrives at the acceleration lane, and this vehicle will be able to merge into uh, the, the main line smoothly. Um, but again, as I said, we assume only longitudinal control in this case. Uh, lateral control is done by human drivers in, in IHP-1. Um, in speed harmonization, we adopted a, a very uh, conventional uh, concept of speed harmonization, where you have a downstream bottleneck conditions. Um, then uh, by using either um, cooperative vehicles or connected vehicle data or uh, fixed detector data, you will be able to understand the downstream traffic condition. In this case, by using some certain algorithms we developed, we uh, make recommendations to the upstream vehicles. In this case, we have a speed harmonization zone, and the vehicles in this zone will be advised to slow down, basically waiting for the downstream queue to be dissipated, and, uh, um, uh, and then the, the vehicles can smoothly go through the, the, the traffic, the, the bottleneck area. Um, and, then, and if you notice that in, in IHP-1, uh, we actually assume a managed lane uh, in this case. Uh, we have all the uh, pl uh, vehicle platoons. They 
are pushed or they are advised to use a managed land so they can have more opportunities. It's a high, more likely they will be able to um, platoon with each other, cooperate with each other, and we have a dedicated on-ramp in that case. So we, we kind of push, you know, have cooperative vehicles using that dedicated on-ramp and so they can have higher chance to cooperate with the vehicles on the managed land. So, uh, so this graph showing you, you know, how the, the, the same similar information um, that uh, um, uh, the vehicles uh, that are, are in the managed land operating and the emerging vehicles, uh, they are also have to be con uh, cooperative uh, driving automated vehicles to be able to use this dedicated facility. And the general purpose traffic, they will still be using the, their uh, regular traffic. But again, once we have this managed land, uh, we will be able to, we have simulation studies really shows that by pushing vehicles into the managed land, they will be able to improve the system uh, uh, performance, um, uh, improve the performance because of their high chance of cooperation with each other. Um, uh, with this HP1, uh, we also started thinking of HP2 and in general cooperative driving automation for your applications. Who are the stakeholders, right? As a, as a CONOPS document, we want to think about who are the stakeholders and how this application uh, will be able to benefit the stakeholders. So we identify two different stakeholders, types of stakeholders. One is road users, there are four subcategories. Uh, regular human drivers, they're just like general purpose vehicles today. We have connected human drivers. These vehicles can receive information. And then also importantly, they can send information out, share their own information, current status. This is actually very important because by sharing this information with other vehicles, with the infrastructure, you know, it really contributes to, you know, the, the, the system management. We improve the kind of observability of the system performance. And the third, third type of road users is the isolated ADS, isolated uh, automated driving system vehicle owners and operators. These vehicles uh, um, using their own sensor, onboard sensors like radar, LIDAR, and navigate through the traffic uh, using their uh, onboard software systems. They not necessarily communicating with each other. Uh, their goal is usually uh, navigate through traffic as fast as possible, for example. The last type of vehicle is actually the focus of this project is what we call CDA, Cooperative Driving Automation Vehicle Owners and Operators. These vehicles can communicate with each other. They can be automated uh, from different levels of automation. And then uh, they have different ways of cooperating with each other, for example, in um, um, they can share information in the land chain scenario. They can share information to avoid, you know, kind of disruption uh, to the, uh, the the traffic stream. So these four users, obviously, their goal, ultimate goal, as a road user, as a vehicles owners, operators, their goal is to go uh, to 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 uh, navigate through traffic as fast as possible while maintaining safety, basic functions of, uh, of their corresponding categories. From another perspective, we have infrastructure owner and operators as another uh, uh, the other type of uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, the cooperative driving automation, the key point is how to use these functions, these three applications to improve the transportation systems management operations, improving uh, mobility efficiency, uh, um, um, fuel efficiency, and reduce emissions, and so on. So they are also another uh, type of key, key stakeholders in this project. So after doing the uh, IHP1 project, we started to think about, okay, we having seen great benefits, level one automation, um, you know, managed lanes, uh, they can, you know, simple, basically simple automation functions can actually already achieve a, a good benefits, improve the system performance. Then we think about what if we can do better, uh, if we can do more than, than, than that. Now we start asking us a lot of questions, right? For example, what if NADS can share its perception information to improve situational awareness, right? For example, uh, one, 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 one automated vehicle, the Eagle automated vehicle may be driving along the highway, then its sensor line of sight are blocked by a bus, and he cannot see a pedestrian about across the roadway. But the other automated vehicle on the road saw, see, sees that pedestrian shared information with this ego uh, automated vehicle. In that case, this vehicle will, first of all, be able to plan its trajectory much better, avoid a lot of the sudden brakes, you know, bigger deceleration values, but also definitely improve the safety of uh, those pedestrians and other uh, types of vulnerable uh, road users. 
This is a post. Uh, this is a sharing perception information. Now, how about this ABS can share its plan, for example, trajectory plan, or even signal time in the phasing plan in the future five, twenty seconds, and one minute. Uh, what about an ABS uh, can negotiate with other vehicles? in the traffic stream, even negotiate in with the infrastructure to improve the system performance. Uh, one example will be uh, in a merge case, if um, my, my own uh, mainline automated vehicle or, or ADS vehicle can slow down a little bit to create a gap to let the, uh, um, the, the merge vehicle, the merge into the system, you know, it will cause very minimum disruption, minimum impact on the mainline traffic stream. However, if this vehicle does not cooperate, the mainline automated vehicle does not cooperate, the uh, merge vehicle may not, find, it's very, may not find a gap in the next 10 seconds to merge in the traffic stream. Eventually, he has to force into the traffic stream, causing big problems to the traffic flow. So these are all the examples that by you know, uh, in improving this sharing information and using higher levels of automation and cooperation, how we can, what we can do. And the other side is definitely the uh, infrastructure side. Uh, as Taylor mentioned in the beginning, that we are, uh, the Federal Highway team, the Karma team, is working on Karma Cloud Service and as an example of this infrastructure management service. Uh, it, the, the, the infrastructure management service, first of all, can collect all the data from connect vehicles, from cooperative driving automated vehicles, and also uh, other uh, maybe conventional detectors, I can, and, and also information like work zones, weather, and, uh, and others, incidents and then can provide this information back to the, automated, uh, the, the vehicles in the traffic stream uh, for them to better navigate through the system and or even provide some guidance, uh, as, we, as Taylor called in the beginning, those kind of rules, planning rules and management rules um, to manage the congestion better. Uh, in, with this uh, new uh, new JDS technologies. So these are all the questions we uh, ask ourselves. It's really the justification and nature of changes to uh, for us to uh, uh, start start developing the integrated highway highway type two uh, ISP to the next generation of the uh, freeway uh, cooperative driving automation applications. Um, before I went forward to talk about ISP two, uh, any any questions? We didn't see any questions come in through the chat pod, um, but feel free to enter them there or uh, mute yourself by pressing uh, star pound and asking them. Um, I think we also have a few questions that we can pose to the group too if, um, if no questions come in. So it's still kind of early in our presentation. Uh, we don't have any questions for the group right now, but uh, further along the line, we probably will. So we'd just like to ask folks to um, think about how I, the IHP concept might apply to their line of work and things that we might include in the concept to uh, make it more applicable to you and uh, work better. And then, yeah, we just received a question, which is, in terms of communications, will DSRC and CV to X um, be in the scope? So I'd like to open that to um, all of our presenters. Sure, yeah. We plan on using DSRC today because it's available and it's part of the platform, and we're opening to using all forms of communication. So as CV to, device, CV to X devices become available, uh, we will be uh, also testing with those. But as of for now, we have uh, only communications with DSRC and 4G LTE on our uh, fleet. All right, Joshi, let's uh, move on to the next session. And um, yeah, please continue to submit any questions in the chat pod. Sure. So, Joshi again. So let me uh, continue to talk about the uh, uh, HP2. And before that, let's uh, dive into uh, the two kind of new Karma uh, features that will enable uh, HP2 to be realized. Uh, we use Karma uh, 3 as an example here, but it can apply to any uh, cooperative driving automation freeway applications or platforms. Uh, the first one is called co uh, we want to talk about cooperative classes. As Taylor mentioned in the beginning, so this is a uh, it's been developed 
uh, by SAE as the new J3216, uh, uh, which is currently under uh, uh, ballot. Um, so this is, uh, if you look at this diagram, uh, the, all the columns on the upper side is the SAE driving automation levels. I think everybody's very familiar with it, so with level one and level two. This is more of a lower level automation and advanced driver, we call it ADAS, advanced driver assistance system in which driver actually monitors the driving environment. And IHP1 is actually purely based on the level one automation, as we just mentioned. Uh, and we have higher level automation, uh, we call it, uh, that's what we call uh, automated driving systems, where ADS monitor the driving environment. So this should be, uh, I think the audience are mostly familiar with uh, the different five levels of automation defined by SAE. But the key here is we actually, uh, the Karma team project, uh, or the SAE, J3216 is defining uh, A, B, C, D, four classes of uh, cooperation. Um, if you can see here, class A is a status sharing. Uh, it basically shares the current status of the vehicle. Here I am, and uh, this is what I see. But the second part, this is what I see, is actually a big deal. As I give an example of pedestrian detection in just now, where one, one or maybe vehicle are blocked by a, uh, the, their line of sensor are blocked by a bus system, but through the sharing, what the other vehicles can see, they will be able to create a much better picture of the dynamic traffic environment such that you can create a, much, a more accurate dynamic uh, world model that ADS usually rely on to navigate itself through the traffic. So the class uh, B is intent sharing. So this is what um, uh, the uh, automated vehicles plan to do. Uh, for example, uh, the vehicle can share its planned trajectory in the next uh, a couple of uh, uh, seconds, and then this information will be kind of very critical uh, for other automated vehicles to know, okay, this vehicle is going to go this way, then I may plan my uh, trajectory in another way. So this is kind of intent sharing. And then the class three is in a higher level of uh, cooperation. It is, it is called agreement seeking, and this is basically let's do it together. And then this is an example of, uh, uh, in the case, for example, cooperative lane change. If one vehicle wants to, to make lane change to a target lane, then the, target, the, the vehicle in the target lane may cooperate uh, and negotiate with actually this, uh, the lane changing vehicle to plan actually the best trajectory for both vehicles. You know, to avoid you know, the maximum disutilities, like such as the brakes or the impacts on the traffic flow. The last one is the pre prescriptive uh, um, uh, cooperation. This is really the ADS will do as directed. This is uh, one example is when there's an incident uh, happens on the roadway, you know, the, 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 the cloud infrastructure may define a uh, geofence area where the vehicles are not allowed to enter. That's basically the road closure in that area. And also the upstream of incidencing may have a reduced, uh, bear, a reduced speed limit that, uh, uh, for safety purposes. And the ADS vehicles have to, our core driving automation vehicles have to, have to follow, you know, this uh, the new reduced speed limit. So this is called a prescriptive information. As you can see, levels of cl uh, classes of uh, cooperation, levels of automation, they, they, they're not mutually exclusive. They, have, they can actually uh, combine, uh, combine together. But uh, the key concepts information here is that by, uh, there are different ways, the possibilities of uh, cooperation between the CDA vehicles and infrastructure and we call CDA devices, and then you can create different possibilities of for, in this case, freeway uh, management and operations. So another concept, we use, also use a Kamar platform, but it can apply to any type of a cooperative driving automation uh, platform. Um, so this is a, a typical software stack, and you, if you look at from sense, from sensing to planning and to action. And then if you look at the, 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 all the blue boxes are what you will see in the conventional uh, automated driving systems. Uh, and then, uh, for example, in sense stack, it uses its own sensors like LiDAR, radar, camera, a GPS on MU to do object detection and to, lo to do a vehicle localization through the sensor fusion. And then all these things together will create a world model uh, that for this vehicle to understand what's around in the surrounding traffic environment and then navigate through the traffic. Um, however, with the you know, cooperative driving automation with connectivity, basically with information sharing, intent sharing, or even negotiation, you will be able to, uh, through 
as we see here, the SRC, 4GLT, CV to X, um, and to share this information and create a much better and more accurate world model for, for uh, cooperative driving automated vehicles to navigate through the traffic. Uh, the most, most, most important thing, most relevant module for this project of uh, freeway applications is the planning stack, where um, we first have route planning or uh, any type of higher level of planning. And then we have uh, uh, sort of uh, different modules. Below that, we can do co uh, collision avoidance, lane follow, uh, lane change, and, and traffic signal, and so on. That's the traditional blue boxes. But then with the, uh, this cooperation, then we can do cooperative versions of what I just mentioned, cooperative lane follow, uh, lane, lane coordination, traffic signal, and cooperative traffic management. You know, the two, two yellow boxes uh, added here, in addition to the traditional blue, blue boxes modules, are co cooperative traffic man management and cooperative accessible transportation, uh, which is definitely enabled by this kind of cooperation and, 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 and through the, uh, um, uh, the, the whole platform. Uh, in particular, for our freeway, um, uh, cooperative driving automation freeway applications, so we will uh, focus on three of these modules. One is cooperative lane follow, CLF. Uh, next is cooperative lane change, CLC. And then last one is cooperative traffic management, uh, CTM. Um, next slide, uh, it really shows what are the subcomponents, what are the features really in these three different modules, right? Remember in the HP1, we define speed harmonization, a cooperative merge lane change, and also uh, uh, platooning. It's kind of, a, we use the features directly to define uh, the, the, these modules, but actually in IHP2, in a new comma three platform, I think this is a better high level summary uh, abstract describe the vehicle maneuver, and then we have some features here. In terms of cooperative lane follow, CLS, we have uh, CACC uh, strings and platooning uh, groups. Uh, I will talk about them in detail and differences between them. And for the cooperative lane change coordination, we have uh, cooperative lane change merge and weak. For quarter traffic management, again, from the infrastructure from the cloud side, we can define the speed control, uh, gap control, and assignment rules, and, and, and for other applications like queue management. Now, before I move into details of each of these modules and features, any, any questions at this point? Um, we didn't see any questions come in through the chat pod. Um, again, feel free to unmute yourself or enter questions there. All right, we just got a question. Um, will IHP2 implement lane keeping, the lane keeping algorithm with computer vision? So, so John, do you want to address this or do you want yeah. me to address this? No, that's fine. I was just making my way to the microphone. This is John Stark. Uh, we will not be using computer vision for the lane keeping uh, this year. That's probably something we can look at next year. But that's a little bit advanced for We'll be dealing with primarily LIDAR and GPS type uh, navigation for now. So one question that we have for folks at this point, um, uh, Joshi went over uh, different features of um, of IHP that we plan on implementing or that we at least have a placeholder for down the line. Um, feel free to answer over the phone or in the chat box, but uh, which features do you guys think are most relevant to you? And do you see any features that might be missing from the list that you'd like to see developed in the future? So, so Katie, do you want me to go 
uh, go ahead to, uh, to the next section, so wait for a few more minutes. Let's give um, another couple seconds. Again, the question is, which features are most relevant with you and, um, and what other features would uh, you like to see that would be relevant? And we'll type that question into the chat pod, too, so people can mull it over. Here is that list of features in case you guys didn't memorize it. All right, we, uh, we got a comment about needing ConOps for IOOs so they can share the location of Karma Rhodes applications. Um, and we will record all these comments as well. And then we got a question that came in on what does gap control mean? Yeah, this is John. Uh, so gap control is when we're in a platoon type of uh, situation or CACC where we're just trying to have each car maintain a specific time gap to the car in front of it. And this is Josh, so in the later part of economics, there's a one slide we'll kind of just describe a little bit more. Um, and, and this can be an infrastructure rule that uh, the cloud, in infrastructure cloud can send this uh, gap recommendations to the, the, the vehicles or the platoon leaders. But then, then the vehicle itself will, I guess, will, will engage in the gap, gap control mode to implement that, that gap rule. Uh, so we got another question, uh, is this only related to freeways or also signalized intersections? Um, our focus is on freeway applications, um, but we are addressing signalized intersections in another project that Amir can speak to. Yeah, so as Ed mentioned, uh, this is actually uh, related to freeway applications only, but we have another project that is uh, Karma Tismo. Uh, in that project, we were actually focusing on, uh, you know, arterial um, signalized intersection and arterial. And it looks like we have a couple related questions about um, is the CONOPS document available for review? Um, is there a copy of the CONOPS and presentation? Um, we will be continuing stakeholder engagement as we advance the process of developing this CONOPS. And if you are interesting, in, interested in um, continuing to give us feedback, please email um, our email address, which is just karma at dot.gov, um, and we can start a conversation with you and loop you into future engagement opportunities. Um, and then, uh, oh, I also want to mention um, for the person who asked about signalized intersections, um, if you're, that project will also be conducting stakeholder engagement, so similarly, feel free to reach out to karma at dot.gov, and we will loop you into those engagement opportunities. And then one more question, have you validated the latency to the cloud? This probably needs to be um, edge compute orchestrated with multiple clouds. Yeah, Barry, that's a good question. This is Taylor. Um, we're in the process of architecting the Karma Cloud right now in a current project that's in parallel. And so, I mean, that's one of the things that this research program is aimed to look at is the latencies amongst all this technology as we communicate from infrastructure to vehicle. Um, so one of the, you know, that's one of the objectives that when we start looking at how the infrastructure will uh, interface with, um, with cooperative enabled uh, vehicles uh, and what latencies those will, um, will be and how, how we then implement specific rules um, on the road uh, to help manage the flow. So a lot of these things that we're looking for technically is the purpose and reason for building uh, these karma tools 
uh, to help us address and understand the technical barriers or challenges that might have uh, when implementing specific uh, strategies in managing the, the congestion and safety. Great question, by the way. Okay, and we got another question. Um, will IHP2 be a totally rebuilt version or an incremental revision upon IHP1? So that's kind of a <clears throat> sideways question. Karma 3 is different from Karma 2 in that we've got a fundamentally different architecture there. Uh, Karma 2 was uh, homegrown, level 1 capability, uh, no lateral control. In order to get the lateral control to extend to level 2, level 3, so forth, um, we imported a bunch of capabilities, functionality from the AutoWare open source community. And in doing so, we had to re-architect the fundamental nature of the Karma structure. So in that sense, there's a lot of difference code than what we had two years ago for IHP1. Um, however, there is still some reuse going on for things like lane change and so forth. Uh, we're looking at some new algorithms or refinements of existing algorithms, uh, but it's not necessarily going to be a total rebuild for each one of these specific uh, applications. Another question, with the open access, is the data available online um, that can be used? So yes, the answer is there will be data available online that we can use. Uh, we are getting the infrastructure set up in order to share that. There's the potential for an enormous amount of data, so we have to be careful about filtering out uh, a reasonable amount that can be actually posted and then downloaded without tremendous amount of cost or, or delay. So um, after we do uh, these, you know, build the capability, do the testing and make sure that everything is functioning correctly, then we'll get the whole system up, do like a full run through of the whole experiment and post that data. Yep. Okay. And then we're just going to, nope. All right. We are going to keep moving on um, and keep track of these questions and uh, we'll make sure to get everyone answers um, either in the chat pod or um, at the end of the presentation. So um, yeah, Joshi, um, give, give the floor back to you to continue to the next section. Sure, thank you, Katie. Uh, Joshi again. So uh, we just have, yeah, we've seen the different modules and different features of um, uh, Integrate Highway Product 2. Um, we, we define in this part of this project. Now I'm going to dive into details to define each one of them and uh, to share with you some use cases and examples, just give you an overview of what it lo really looks like. The first one is a collaborative lane follow, the first module. Um, it, uh, simply put, it allows two or more vehicles to closely travel together as platoons or CACC streams. As I promised, here is a table that it really explains to explains to you the differences between platoon and CACC, and they can actually coexist in the traffic stream, um, depending on how you want to, uh, how, the, how the vehicles negotiate with each other, work with each other. Um, the, the first difference is in terms of control uh, hierarchy. Uh, platooning is really a hierarchical control with special responsibilities for the platoon leader, right? The platoon leader will be uh, able to you control the whole platoon members defining different rules, like the maximum platoon size and so on. Um, and the CACC is more of a decentralized control with no special responsibilities for the string leader. So in, 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 in other words, that they just uh, be able to communicate with each other, they quit with the software, they are able to follow each other very closely. And look, if you look at the membership, the second uh, row here, CACC is more of an ad hoc string membership and vehicles just behave independently. They just happen to be able to follow each other closely. And then the members, uh, the, the platooning is really a coordinated platoon groups uh, membership uh, and managed by um, 
the platooning uh, leader, but platoon leader, and they are the, more of an organized behavior in a platoon. Uh, the third one we call it special scope. It's more of operations in a single lane or uh, multiple lanes for the platoon platooning. Uh, for example, one vehicle. In this graph you should see here, uh, the vehicle A may want to uh, change lane to join the platoon. I mean, this vehicle A need to start with a you know, negotiation uh, talk with the platoon leader. For example, the platoon leader got to accept this vehicle. Uh, we need to check, are they beyond the existing maximum platoon size already? Are they at this, so they will not be able to accept any platoons. So the, the, the vehicle A, in order to join the platoon, they will actually negotiate the vehicle. So it's, more, uh, it's really a cooperative uh, lane change and platooning together, but the, 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 this is a larger spatial scope. While, while CACC is, again, it's an it's a ad hoc string um, formation and with the small falling gaps. Now, in this graph, I also shows that uh, uh, on the left side, actually, there are two, uh, four, uh, four vehicle uh, CACC strings. And, uh, and it's also possible you know, each different vehicle may have their own pr preference of falling gaps. In this graph, I sort of slightly shows that the, the falling gap is slightly different from each other. So the, again, the platoons and CACC are two ways of uh, uh, two ways of uh, um, um, the cooperative land follow in a, in a, in a freeway uh, a, a traffic stream, and they can uh, coexist in a traffic stream. The second is cooperative lane coordination. Uh, it includes uh, co cooperative lane change, uh, co cooperative merge, and cooperative uh, weave. Right. So anything uh, basically the the uh, cooperative driving automated vehicles, they will plan a smooth lateral motion. Uh, from the current lane to the adjacent lane, from the acceleration lane to the mainline lanes, and, and so on for, for the in the merge case. So in this, uh, these are similar concepts. Now in the, the graph here, I show basically a few examples of uh, a cooperative merge. Now these are, uh, you know, all on the, the, can be of different uh, scenarios of merge. Uh, for example, in case one, uh, vehicle A want to merge into the main line. It, it can, uh, the vehicle B is not really blocking that vehicle A's trajectory, maybe blocking a little bit. So vehicle A just need to know where this vehicle B are and uh, sort of merge into the traffic stream, maybe uh, break a little bit. But there's a different case in uh, the, the case two. Uh, vehicle A want to merge, and then uh, we have vehicle B in the uh, first lane. Then vehicle B's future trajectory will intersect with the planned trajectory of vehicle A. So in this case, they, vehicle A and B can sort of talk to each other. It's a world of vehicle, vehicle cooperation. Uh, they, then vehicle B can make a lane change to uh, the, 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 the left lane, uh, the, sorry, to the right lane, and then create a, such a gap for vehicle A to merge into the stream. Now, and this can be facilitated by an infrastructure cloud as well, uh, when, it, when we talk about lane assignment in a minute, but it can also be a V2V uh, uh, communication, depending on how you define the algorithms. In case three, it's really um, uh, vehicle B need to slow down a little bit to let vehicle A to merge into the system. Uh, so this is another type of uh, sort of cooperation, right? Uh, let vehicle A merge smoothly. And then in case four, uh, vehicle B need to brake very heavily to slow down to let to create a gap. So in this case, maybe vehicle A, vehicle B should accelerate, and in this case, uh, create a gap for vehicle A to merge. So these are four example cases. Uh, for uh, for the, the the co op merge scenarios, and there there are definitely more, and some of them can be, as I said, enable of vehicle to vehicle cooperation. Some more can be done by the guidance from the infrastructure cloud, um, depending on how the algorithms is uh, designed. The last one is uh, last module is cooperative traffic management uh, (CTM). It includes uh, you know the speed control, gap control, and lane assignment uh, as of the main features we define here. Uh, the, the the speed control uh, is really allows uh, the vehicle to adjust the speed uh, based on the the rules sent from other vehicles or the for example when they're in a platoon they have to obey the rules of the platoon and they they all if they are uh, in the in the speed, speed harmonization case the cloud will send the speed recommends recommended speed or speed commands uh, to the vehicles so the graph here really shows you a concept of uh, speed harmonization. In the in A, the benchmark case where you have uh, 
vehicles go into the bottleneck and slow down and almost stop and then start up slowly. So it really has a big impact on a you know a traffic stream. But uh, in the B, uh, while the infrastructure, the cloud can you know, send speed commands or recommendations to the green vehicle, in this case, the green curve, it's a space-time uh, trajectory, this vehicle can slow down, really just like speed harmonization, slow down in upstream, and then wait until the downstream queue to sort of dissipate, condition improve a little bit, so that they will be able to uh, manage through the, the, the traffic stream smoothly. And you can see the whole following of vehicles, they can be CAC platoon, uh, CAC strings or platoons or any type, even human driven vehicles can be smoothed as well. So the gap control, as I said, is the, uh, uh, the, the string uh, when this sort of allows the vehicle to adjust its gap uh, to its preceding vehicle, whether they are part of the string uh, or group or even the uh, kind of from the uh, uh, information from the cloud. Like when they're in a platoon, Obviously, they have to engage in a uh, gap control mode to be able to safely follow the the the, um, the front vehicle. And then the the in a platoon, the platoon leader may have that uh, information, the recommended platoon size and uh, recommended sorry the gap gap size in this vehicle as well. Uh, the lane assignment uh, is really uh, a stack the request from the cloud regarding which lane of the vehicle should plan to be. Uh, in a, for example, in an incident case uh, where you have um, uh, one lane closure, obviously you want to assign this vehicle to another lane that is not closed um, way before this vehicle reached the incident site. We'll call it early lane change. Or uh, you can have uh, uh, if one uh, merge area, for example, the, in a right merge case, the um, right rightmost lane is blocked, almost blocked, or long stop and go queue. Uh, in very bad traffic condition, you can actually assign these vehicles uh, to the left, automated vehicles upstream to, to the left lane. In this case, potentially relieve the congestion, but also create some gaps for the merge vehicles. So this is a, a how lane assignments can, can be helpful. Now again, with this cooperative lane assignments, we, we have been talking about this infrastructure cloud concept in the Karma platform. This is the uh, Karma cloud. We uh, the, the team has been the Karma team has been developing. Um, the here in the Karnaps, we, we we simply explains the uh, how Karma cloud will help the IROs in developing different roles and strategies into addressing congestion. Uh, there are two directions, right? The, the, the first direction is from cloud to the vehicle. And then the cloud can send we call planning roles or mapping roles. Planning roles is what we just talked about, the cooperative traffic management. You have uh, speed rules and gap rules and so on, and the maximum platoon size and so on. Um, but the, the other set of mapping roles. Um, by you know infrastructure cloud service because they can actually receive uh, much more information uh, than the the, the 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 vehicle themselves the vehicle themselves so they will be able to uh, send uh, uh, better dynamic war models and also send any other lane configuration or models concerning the work zones, incident, and weather conditions by uh, in the cloud will be able to extract information from different sources. Uh, the other side is, uh, as I a, said, a, a vehicle to the cloud. Actually, this is the one part of the cooperative uh, perception, uh, as I call it. So it's really the, the, the vehicle you know, on the road can share uh, this current status, intent, and other information, and also what they send through their sensors and send back to the, 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 the cloud. And again, this cloud then will improve its dynamic world models and uh, send back to the vehicle in terms of mapping mapping roles to, 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 to enable the vehicle to make much better uh, decision making in the traffic stream. So this is the, uh, the CONOPS actually uh, gives more, a little more details, the CONOPS documents a little more, de gives a little more details on the, uh, um, um, the, the, the different components of data that should be sent uh, between the, the cloud to the vehicles. So much for the, the four different uh, uh, modules and then um, you, obviously, we need to evaluate how uh, the uh, cooperative driving automation uh, free applications um, eventually when it's developed. Uh, so we talk about uh, performance metrics in the uh, CONOPS as well. We consider the two types of metrics right for this application. One is vehicle behavior. That's very important. Uh, vehicle doing platooning, they're doing co cooperative merge. You know, we want to see whether the, the, the vehicle behavior can meet uh, certain requirements as we defined, uh, like separation gaps, you know, the travel speed, speed 
changes, oscillations, and so on. And from the other side, because we, the, the CDA uh, freeway applications is focused on managing the traffic, improving system management and operations. So we would talk, we defined safety, uh, traffic flows, stability, uh, throughput, sustainability, and so on, these performance measures to improve the, uh, to, to, to really re evaluate the traffic impact of CDA free applications. Um, before I move to the last part, any questions here? Okay, we'll give folks a couple minutes. We'll take a uh, five-minute pause until 2.05 for questions before we continue on. Um, and in the meantime, we wanted to pose the question, um, are the proposed metrics readily available from IOOs, and um, what, performance should al what performance metrics should also be considered? All right, we got a question about edge computing that was answered in the chat pod by um, one of our, our Karma pro project managers, Sudhakar. Um, then we received a couple more questions. That our um, project team is reading through and mulling over. So the question is, is there any available software in the loop simulation uh, being set up that may help cross-platform development and debugging these algorithms without connecting to real hardware? Yes, uh, we are moving forward on several fronts with some simulation efforts. Uh, we don't have any in place at this point, but we are looking at all software simulations as well as hardware in the loop simulation. We expect to have something available uh, later this year. That refers to the question on slide 34, may not work with multi-lane cases since other vehicles can change into the in to take advantage of the created gaps. Okay. Sashi, uh, feel free to chime in also. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the uh, ISP is not, uh, or 
what we discussed here is not designed for the single-lane cases. Now, we uh, basically um, create a, a sketch here to explain what it is going to look like, uh, ideally, but in, in, the, in the real world conditions, there, yes, gee, I agree with you, there could be other vehicles to launch engines. But uh, imagine in the, in the higher market penetration of uh, collaborative drive automation, if we can enable sort of cooperation of uh, a lot of the vehicles, and then um, they, uh, you know, we will not let the other vehicles to really take advantage of the gap. If the gap is created for um, for for the merged vehicle, so that gap will mint, be maintained for that particular vehicle in this case. This is John. Let me add to that, Chashi, please. Um, if we're talking about a situation where we have uh, all uh, CDA vehicles or um, high penetration CDA in the situation, then um, two particular vehicles, maybe from opposite side lanes, that are looking at moving into that gap should be able to negotiate with each other and figure out who's got the best need for that gap or, or the best opportunity to get into it safely and so that they won't be both trying to jump in at the same time and cause a crash. If one of the vehicles happens to be human driven and so there is no negotiation possible, then the automated vehicle trying to get into that gap would at least have the uh, awareness through its sensors or maybe through some uh, standoff sensors from the nearby vehicles communicating to it that it would know that that other vehicle is coming in and can't be negotiated with. So it would have the awareness to uh, back off if it didn't feel that it was safe to do so. Uh, and this is Amir. I would want to add, add to this. Uh, so in future, if uh, we increasing, you know, the market share of the CDAs, I think these, you know, uh, uh, interfering, you know, maneuvers will be reduced and we will have, you know, more benefits, you know, out of this project. But I agree that, you know, for maybe uh, initial deployment of these, you know, algorithms in with very, you know, low market share, um, you will not be able to, you know, get the, the uh, maybe the best potential, you know, benefit out of it, but we will have the benefits at, at, at least. And, and I'm here to Josh again. I want to add to this discussion as well. Um, if you would talk about the harmonization case, like in this sketch, uh, by slowing down vehicles, there may be big gaps. You know, in a, I think five years ago, Saxton Lab did a like very first speed harmonization experiment with the three automated vehicles sort of running in a traffic stream. They are not necessarily blocking the three lanes on I-66. Um, we will still have the chance uh, to uh, change lanes and overtake the slow automated vehicles in front of them. Uh, the, the experiment actually, if you look, you can go check the, the, the report and then a couple of publications we did. Uh, it's very surprising. You know, the, some of the vehicles, they, they definitely do that, change, change lanes, make use of that gap, and then they get themselves into the stop and go traffic earlier than others. But um, most of the cases, we found that the whole traffic, at least 200 meters, uh, or 300 meters behind that uh, um, the, the slow automated vehicles are been smoothed uh, very well. So that's actually a, a very big experiment uh, project we did uh, five years ago at Saxon Lab. So uh, yeah, that can be a partially address your question that, you know, even under low market penetration, um, this kind of, uh, you know, control can still help in smoothing the, 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 the traffic. All right, um, let's move on to the next session. We will have a final opportunity for questions um, at the end. So take it away, Joshi. Sure. Uh, so the, the, there's a last a few slides uh, very quickly. Uh, this is the last two uh, chapters. Uh, the chapter four is uh, operational scenarios. Uh, uh, I, I sort of have mentioned most of the, the example scenarios when I go through the different concepts. But in the in the CONOPS document, we actually went through uh, three detailed descriptions of how uh, 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 the uh, cooperative driving automation for applications will work. Uh, we have three scenarios, as we listed here. One is end-to-end -end CDA operations uh, from entering to exiting a freeway. That's basically when a vehicle, uh, starting with the automated vehicle, ego vehicle, enters the, the freeway system and then 
there's a collaborative, we describe scenarios, but first of all, they will engage in a collaborative merge, and then this vehicle, when this vehicle get it, be getting onto the main line, and they re change lanes to join another platoon. Made, but in this case, this vehicle need to negotiate with the platoon leader. And then after a while, you know, maybe some other vehicles may want to join a platoon. If it's a cutting join, uh, the, 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 my Eagle uh, automated vehicle need to negotiate with the front, uh, the lead, platoon leader to create a gap. Uh, to let this cutting join happen. And after a while, when this Eagle automated vehicle uh, want to get off the, the, the freeway, or the, the Eagle CDA vehicle want to get off the freeway, and they will engage in collaborative lane change and collaborative weaving kind of uh, uh, maneuvers to ensure the, the impact on the traffic is uh, bring down to the minimum. And obviously, uh, there will be a exiting when they, uh, there, there will be also uh, the process of how they leave the platoon, how they uh, ch make cooperative lane changes to uh, the deceleration lanes and exit the freeway. The second uh, second scenario, is, operational scenario, is that, uh, from the CTM, uh, tra cooperative traffic management perspective. We sort of uh, use a merge uh, merge case to talk about the speed control, just like the speed harmonization we usually are familiar with, uh, and also lane assignment, right? How when there's one lane is kind of blocked. And how, how you sign the vehicle to another lane, first of all, to relieve the congestion, but also create additional gaps for the merge vehicles to merge into the system, uh, mainline system. And the third one is dedicated facility operations for early deployment. This is sort of, a, we believe still in early deployment stages, if we wanted to achieve big benefits in earlier deployment stages, you, uh, dedicated facilities like dedicated lanes or dedicated on-ramps uh, or off-ramps will be very helpful. Uh, we have done simulations as part of other projects and, uh, to, to demonstrate the benefits. And in this scenario, we also uh, talked about um, CAV that, uh, sorry, cooperative driving automation, dedicated lanes, or we can have a, even a mixture of uh, uh, CDA vehicles and other special purpose vehicles. They are like high occupancy vehicles which are ori uh, originally eligible to use this managed lens. So th th basically discussing this concept to show how to use dedicated facility to, uh, for early deployment uh, opportunities. Uh, so I'm just go through them quickly here, but the, the, the CONOPS document will give you an, a very uh, comprehensive overview. Um, the last chapter, chapter five, as I said in the beginning, talks about analysis of system potential benefits, uh, uh, limitations and impacts on the uh, 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 TISMO, trans Transportation System Operations Management, and also the uh, future uh, research. Um, I'm, I'm kinda, I kind of covered that, I'm skipping that, but uh, one critical uh, section in the last chapter is the high-level testing plan. We sort of laid out a recommended steps to testing the, the, uh, the vehicle. Uh, applications. Uh, the first one is simulation testing, and we recommended both traffic simulators uh, and uh, we call autonomous driving simulators. Automated driving simulators should be used in this case. Uh, traffic simulators like uh, Sumo or like commercial softwares like Visum can be used uh, um, to evaluate traffic performance. But uh, if you want to, uh, again, uh, to look at the details of uh, software performance and, and uh, even you want to simulate the sensors, uh, that will have to rely on some auto automated driving uh, simulators like Carla or LG SVL. Um, we have a closed track testing planned as part of this project as well, uh, which will be testing on the test track uh, the end end uh, CDA uh, operational scenarios we, we managed. And just like IHP1, this we also, as part of this project, plan to testing the public, uh, go to public road for testing. It will be on the managed land facility uh, with live traffic. Um, basically, we have our uh, federal highway vehicles, maybe collaborative vehicles together to do this collaborative driving automation free, free uh, testing. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the whole CONOPS, and, and then the, uh, the, the, the CONOPS document will be released later, and it will include much more details, uh, technical details, and uh, oper operational scenario descriptions as well for your reference. That's my uh, end of presentation. Questions? Okay, we have a final question. For you. Um, we had a final question to pose to the group, and um, the chat box 
what are the critical scenarios that um, this CVA free waste project can address, um, given what Joshi just presented? And again, feel free to um, pose other questions in the chat pod or unmute yourself and ask them. We had a question um, for all presenters, which edge cases are problematic? Um, so, so John, do you want me to address it or do you want to give us a yeah, yeah, first? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, so um, I, I think the, uh, when, when I say edge cases, uh, you know, my understanding is mostly uh, in, in a lot of the uh, safety applications when we're testing automated vehicles, uh, the, there's a lot of uh, safety edge, edge cases we got to cover. Um, but the, for the IHP case, I think we are mostly uh, talking about this, what we call basic travel in, in Karma. It's more of the general transportation system management and uh, operations. And uh, the, we are not going to down to the details of the uh, uh, ADS operations level. That has been, uh, been handled by a separate project to developing the, the Karma platform, that's my understanding. Now, I can, I can uh, Add upon it, so there are uh, cases where we not only consider 100% market penetration of cooperative driving automated vehicles, we actually uh, have to consider the, the different manual drivers or connected human drivers. And as, as you see in the beginning, I define them as the stakeholders in the traffic in the system. So. Uh, the, the human driver behaviors uh, becomes, uh, you know, unpredictable in a lot of cases. Some drivers are very conservative, some drivers are very aggressive. So these uh, are actually, uh, we, we call it the, like, edge cases, quote unquote, uh, for us. But then we, some drivers may, may, may have a very sudden maneuvers, you know, that our systems have to be able to be able to predict, right? When, you know, in, in in when we plan the automated cooperative driving CDA vehicles, planning their own trajectories. Um, in one important thing is that if there are a lot of surrounding human-driven traffic, surrounding human vehicles, we'll be able to, uh, first of all, receive that information if they're connected drivers or sense their existence using our sensors, and then plan to predict their potential trajectories, and then, uh, then plan of the CDA vehicle trajectories correspondingly. So that is actually a more, uh, you know, concern in our, uh, not a concern, more of a problem that uh, for our sort of basic travel case, we have to be able to accommodate all the uh, different types of road users, not just 100% of CDA vehicles. Yeah, this is John. I would second that, Joshi. I think the, the really big uh, uh, edge cases that are, that are still hanging out there are dealing with the, the human driven vehicles that are in part of the public traffic. Um, we're, you know, we're developing this on a, uh, on a budget and we don't have the uh, resources for the super sophisticated um, ADS functionality that uh, some other, uh, you know, commercial companies might be able to do. So that's something we have to uh, be very careful of and make sure that, that uh, we rely on our safety drivers for keep an eye out for uh, human drivers in the traffic stream. Uh, this is Ed. Um, as Joshi mentioned, we're more focused on the basic travel um, on, on the freeway. And as John also mentioned, we are on a budget. But uh, I would turn that question back to you and the group. Uh, and ask what edge cases do you think are uh, important for us to consider, um, maybe not uh, immediately, but down the line?
All right, thanks to those who are entering um, answers in the chat pod. We are taking notes. The occlusion um, operations under inclement weather and network limitation. Yeah, as far as network limitations, one thing we, we have been thinking about is uh, how are our cars going to be dealing with situations where we have dropped messages or uh, network saturation where we're just not getting all the messages through that we hope we get through. Um, and you know, there may be times where they just have to operate in fully autonomous mode for a number of seconds and then maybe get back into some cooperative communications. But uh, yeah, that's a big issue. We'll continue monitoring the chat box, um, but we'll move on just to um, sort of discuss some next steps and, and again give out our, our contact information for future opportunities. So uh, thanks, Joshi, for the nice presentation. Uh, our next action items for this project is to finalize the CONOFS documents and according to the feedback that we get from the stakeholders uh, and hopefully by next month. And next we will have the algorithms ready uh, by October 2020 and by ready I mean it needs to be developed and, be, and the algorithms needs to be tested with the simulation uh, models and also uh, any potential you know, box needs to be fixed. And, and finally, we will have these you know, applications, have these algorithms uh, deployed on the Karma-enabled vehicles, and we will have a demonstration, a set of demonstration on, on, in light traffic uh, by July of next year. So if you have any uh, feedback, uh, we would appreciate if you can just, you know, send us email to our the Karma program. It's karma at dot and it would be much appreciated. All right, thanks everyone again for joining us today. Thank you for the National Operations Center of Excellence for hosting us. Um, we hope to um, you know, continue engaging this audience as we develop this CONOPS and feel free to reach out to us at karma.dot.gov anytime.